Catherine. What's, what's wrong? Catherine, what's wrong? I have never had a Catherine irritate me so much. Famous Catherines that we like. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Okay? Catherine Jackson. <laughs> you know, she produced Legends. Um, hell, my friend Kathy from high school. She liked Keish a lot for us to be 13, 14, but Kathy was cool. Kathy Bates. Um, let me see. Who else here? Catherine Webb. These are all Catherines that we don't mind. But here you come messing shit up. Catherine Johnson, the iconic, strong black woman from the Hidden Figures movie. Catherine, what did you go wrong here? Come on up front. You know what you did. Come on up front. Those of y'all leaving spoilers in the comments, bring, bring, bring them asses. Come on up front. Let's have a conversation, y'all. What's good, everybody? Welcome, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Love is Blind, UK, season one. This is episode seven. We're going to try to get through this, all right? First things first, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. Um, leave your comments down below. I like to say, please don't leave spoilers, but some of y'all are doing it on purpose at this point. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all, so let's go ahead and get started. So, the episode starts off with Catherine and Freddie. So, they're, they're out at a store. They're doing a little light shopping. And he's just kind of like playing around, making jokes. He holds up a shoe and it's like, can I get a size 11? Um, she got way too upset about that too. Girl, if you don't wear an 11, and if you did wear an 11, what are you mad about it for? But he, they're like looking at clothes and he's like, ooh, look at the mushroom sweater. Just doing what people do. I do that type of stuff to my mom all the time. I have seen my brother do that type of stuff to his wife in the store. It's not that big of a deal. Catherine is just moody AF because she does not like Freddie. And quite frankly, you're not good enough for him. So she's getting more and more agitated. And she, tells, she says that him joking around makes her feel like they're more friends and not a fiance. That is the stupidest shit I have ever heard. So because y'all are fiancés, y'all can't joke? Is that what you're trying to say, Catherine? Or are you just finding a way to get on everybody's nerves, starting with mine? Okay? So she asked him, like, would he like to go shopping with her? How would that look? And he was like, I mean, you know, I will come with you, and then I would probably just go sit down while, you know, you go do your thing. She's like, well, that's not a shopping together. He was like, that's what you always see men do. Like, we've heard that old trope that when men are in the mall, um, when men are shopping with their wives, the men all go gather and sit together, and the women continue to do the shopping. The thing is, C Catherine... You're just finding reasons. It's not that you don't like Freddie. It's not that you have an issue with the fact that he might have been a cheater. Or excuse me, that he was a cheater. It's just the fact that you're a bitch. So he then tells her, or he starts like rubbing her back. And she was like, stop stroking me like a dog. Stop acting like a female one then. Stop acting like one then. Yes, I called her a bitch. I did, because that's how she's acting. So then we get to Demi and Ollie. This was seen, this scene, I guess is what y'all were talking about when y'all kept saying, wait till you get to the grocery store scene. I'm here now, y'all. <laughs> I made it. Um, so they're grocery shopping. And apparently Ollie is vegan, okay? And he's going to be making some vegan nachos for her friends. So she kept stressing about it. And I think she got him wound up about it. So in this scene... Um, we see that Ali is just not focused in the store. And I think it was a lot of sauce put on this thing, to be honest. So they're in a grocery store. They're there to get things for nachos. Sh shit, chips, guacamole, salsa, uh, uh, some vegan cheese. It's not rocket science. It's not hard. So he looks at some bananas. He picks up. A vine of bananas, and she was like, what are those for? Uh, to eat. 
I guess I didn't understand this. I didn't understand this. So apparently to Demi, if you go into a grocery store to get dinner, you can only get those items. Him talking about the guacamole and talking about that, like it, I think it was blown out of proportion. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I really didn't. I think that Demi is overly nervous because she's over and she's in her head about everything. She overthinks everything. I think that her being overly nervous about this made him overly nervous about this. Y'all are serving nachos for dinner. Oh my God. It's not the end of the world. I have seen, you know, the little, the little chimpanzees that they be training to do the shit on TikTok make nachos. It's not that big of a deal. The way that she was flipping out about it. Y'all are getting each other all wound up and you're stressing me out in the process, okay? So we get to Bobby and Jasmine and this this was it for me, okay? So Bobby mentions how he's doing his due diligences. He was like, I'm not on my phone. I ain't been on it. So I'm trying to be, you know, more present with you. So Jasmine was like, yeah, because social media is an insecurity for me. This bothers me about certain women, right? I I get, I, I cringe whenever I hear women say they don't trust their men because you don't know what they're doing on social media. I'm sorry, but that is a you problem, right? The fact that Jasmine is trying to push this onto Bobby, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair. So she said that she has had issues in relationships in the past because her guy couldn't be trusted on social media. So this is my question for, for the chat, for the comments. How do you guys feel about that? Like, do you guys think that your partner, male or female, liking Instagram pictures, like, is that is that a deal breaker? Is that cheating to you guys? Because to me, it's not a big deal, right? Now, if it goes into the territory of now he's sending another woman messages and all that type of stuff, but like he's searching, he's searching Instagram models. Who cares? He can go park his ass down at the beach and see the same women. He can go ogle women in the store. He can ogle women at work. I don't quite understand that, but Jasmine seems very insecure, but I think that Jasmine is just doing this because she don't like Bobby in his ears, and she should probably just be a little more honest about it. So she then goes on to say, I YouTubed you. I said, who YouTube somebody? I'm like, that was weird. That was weird. I thought she would say Google, but she YouTubed him. And he did a music video, and he was like, oh, you found it. I said, what's in the video? So he's singing, and he's, you know, being on the, the main video girl. And it's nothing sexual. It's nothing bad. They're dancing. He's hugging her. He's singing into his neck, the typical stuff we see in a music video. So Jasmine is like, it just made me uncomfortable. Why? Why did it make you uncomfortable? Jasmine really starting to wear me thin. <laughs> Jasmine is starting to, you know what I mean? Because this, this was silly to me. So she then has an issue with how close he was with the woman in the video. She said that being in the real world and getting their phones back just brought back a lot of old feelings for her. She wants to be secure and confident in their relationship. Bobby has not given you a reason not to be, though. I don't get this. But see, no, Jasmine, your issue is you spent your entire time in Greece being up in Demi's business. You were so focused on telling Ali that Demi was insecure. It's like Demi is like a pet project to you. I question your friendship with her now, to be real. You were so far in her mix up in Greece when you should have been worrying about your own insecurities. Was it projection? Because that's the vibe that I'm getting. You projected all this stuff onto um, Demi. Demi didn't need no projection. She had it all inside of her anyways. So he then lets her know, Bobby, that he's not interested in any other women. 
And he, you know, it's up to him to make sure that she is confident and comfortable. It's a two-way street, Bobby, because I feel like no matter how much you try to instill in her and assure her and reassure her that you're not doing anything and that you were all in on her, I still feel like it's not going to be enough. So now should Demi come in and get up in your business, um, Jasmine, and tell Bobby in his ears everything that you done told her? Good God. So then we get to Demi and Ali again. So Ali is making these vegan nachos. And Ali, I got an Ali pop for you today. Okay, can y'all see it? I don't get it. I got an Ali pop for you today because we you were okay this episode. So cheers to you. Okay, cheers to you. So he's making, he wants to make these vegan nachos. They're in the kitchen and he's stressing and she's stressing. And she don't like the fact that he dropped the avocado. And I'm like, everybody, everybody relax. Oh, my God. Their their anxiety being so high had me anxious watching it. Good God. So her guests come in, her friends come in. And I was with the guests. What makes these vegan? The cheese? <laughs> Oh, girl, she was like, they look like regular vegan, like regular nachos. So... Demi said that um, she was kind of like in a shell in the pods. So she didn't want to like get too close to the other girls. She didn't want to tell them who she was feeling, who she was dating. She tried to keep to herself. But because um, eventually you had to talk about who you liked, right, and who you were dating because it started to get down to the wire. And she was like, Catherine, who was one of her best friends. I said, y'all love calling people y'all besties. Besties for the resties. That was not your best friend. That was a girl that was going through the experience with you. But I guess. So Ali was like, I mean, both of them like me. My connection was stronger with Demi and our connection is still strong. So they then talk about how Demi is, um, because she has endometriosis, that she's worried about the possibility of not being able to have children herself, and Ali is open to adoption. He said yes, because his mother is adopted, so he's very open to that. Her friends like him, he likes her friends, they get the, st um, the stamp of approval, awesome sauce, and now Ali feels like he's closer to Demi. Catherine and Freddie. You know what? We got to do it now. So Catherine goes to see Freddie's house. I'm going to tell y'all this. One thing that I cannot stand on these shows, mainly Love is Blind, is when these people go into somebody's house and they're shocked that these adults have a nice house. She was like, this is nice. I said, oh, God, Catherine, what, do you live in a shack? No. Was Freddie's house nice? Yes, it was a nice house. Was it over the top, extravagant? Oh, my God, I could never know. Let's see your little piece of house, Catherine. So she's walking through. She judged him because there was a spider on the wall. I said, ma'am, uh, Catherine, again, you are ruining the Catherine streak. Good God, Catherine Heigl. I don't think people like her. <laughs> I don't think people like Izzy, but so she's judging him because of the spiders. I don't know what's going on with Freddie in the doors on his house, but they, they aren't on the hinges. Maybe he's like refinishing them. So that's cool. Um, he has like a mirror in his bedroom and she was like, so does a woman live here? Why is your mirror sparkly? Now I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I questioned, I too questioned the sparkle mirror, but maybe he just liked it, you know, whatever. So she kept saying that she's, um, that the house was bougie. I said, mm. that the house was bougie and she was surprised that a funeral director had a nice house. Y'all know funeral directors are not like the morticians that we see in creepy movies that only wear black and only eat veal and only drink like dark cola. Girl, what? <laughs> she just, I just, I don't know. Catherine embarrassed herself to me. So she was like, this is shock. I mean, this is a shock. 
this is a lot for a 32 year old and i'm like mm, I, I guess so he keeps calling it their house you can see her cringing because in her mind she ain't about to marry that man she ain't about to marry that man so we get to tom and maria so y'all know i don't like tom no more because tom is a judgmental prick that judged maria for having a job that is her being a makeup artist just the dumbest thing ever so she says she's willing to move past him judging her for her job i said don't move too fast pay attention to how he treats service workers how does he treat the barista how does he treat the waitress how does he treat the hostess the bailman the taxi driver because if you're judging and you think lowly of a makeup artist what do you think about other service people so I would just, you know, take take heed to that, Maria. Don't, you know what I mean? So he's nervous to meet her family. She said, look, my family's cool. They're more concerned about how you treat me than it is about your religion and your background, that type of stuff. And then he does that creepy laugh again that I, I can't quite put a pin in it, but it's something about the fact that he keeps laughing like that. I'm, a, I'm getting closer to it. I'm getting closer to the cadence that it pops up in. So she basically wants him to respect the fact that she's um, she's Muslim. So she said, look, PDA, don't be going at it with me in front of my mom. It's disrespectful. And he's like, but I just want to show people how much I love you. You don't only show people how much you love your partner by sticking your tongue down their throat. I think that's something that Tom may have to realize, but there are other ways you can you can actually show that. Get her a glass of water, get her a napkin, take her plate for her, offer to get something else for her to eat, check on her. Like there are a number of ways. Um, pull out her chair, push her chair in. You know what I mean? There are a number of ways that you can show that you care about your partner other than groping them in front of their family. Okay, so she said that her being Muslim has had an impact on her dating life and she wants to make sure or she has always wanted to make sure that she respected her father in the process. So she thinks that her father would have loved Tom. She would have loved to see them together. I don't know because Tom is judgy and your family didn't give judgy boots, but I Demi and Ali. So they are talking once again about communicating and how they feel that they just have a different way in communicating. So Demi mentions that she has noticed that he paces and how he kind of stresses about some of the smaller things that are not a big deal to her. Demi, not too much because you stressed about him picking up bananas in the grocery store. Okay. So he tells her that he is ADHD and I wish that Ali wouldn't have said it on Instagram. I wish he would have waited until it came on on the show, but you know, that's your business. Um, so he said that she is one of only like three people that are outside of his family that even knows that he has it. So ADHD, he said, and you know, for the average person, it's, their ability to stay focused on, in a nutshell, their inability to stay focused um, at certain tasks at hand or just in life. So he said that he has a very severe case of it, so he's never finished a book. Things that would typically take five minutes take him like half a day to complete. So Demi is like, don't be ashamed of that. Like, don't nobody read no more? No, but she was like, don't be ashamed of that because you still wrote that beautiful proposal. So even if it took a couple hours for you to write that and it took some of the other men five minutes, be proud of the fact that you were able to even get it done. And I agree. I agree. Um, never be ashamed of anything that you have that is out of your control. So you have ADHD. That's not your fault. It's nothing you did to cause it. You just have ADHD. But don't let whatever shortcomings 
to anybody else that has it too. Don't let whatever shortcomings may come because of that make you ashamed of yourself because the fact that you are able to still get up and function and you have a job and you have a career and you are able to live a life and be social and do all these other different things is a testament in itself. Be proud of yourself for what you have done. Don't be ashamed of what you haven't yet been able to accomplish right so she's happy that he was able to open up to her um he is pleased that he was able to open up to her as well okay so then we get to freddie and Catherine. so they meet freddie's family love his brother his brother i love seeing um people that have down syndrome interact with their families they are so cute to me absolutely absolutely cute his brother was so geeked up to see him and i was too i was geeked up to see you little brother loved it so his mom freddie's mom says she didn't know marriage was gonna happen for freddie she said i know he fine okay i know how my son is because my friends okay the ladies be coming down the street looking for freddie i said okay freddie go on and get you a cougar because this heifer ain't it so freddie then asked his brother to be his best man and he they were like he doesn't understand it yet but he will on the wedding day so i said oh my god my eyes are starting to leak oh my god it was such a cute little moment so freddie's family is kind of clocking that he's more reserved than he usually is so he's talking to a sister and he tells his sister things are going good but me and Catherine are just different so I have a more, you know, bubbly personality. I like to joke. I'm more outgoing. She's more reserved. She's approved. She's boring. And on the on the flip, you know, she likes to go out and, and party and do all these things. I'm cool at the house watching the film. I can really, you know, kick it on at the house. And his sister was like, um, well, I mean, that's kind of something y'all got to kind of work out, but don't you know, don't dim yourself for her. So then Freddie was like, I don't know if I'm good enough for her. I said, bullshit. And that was with his sister. She ain't good enough for you. Heffa. Oh, I do not like Catherine. I don't like the way she's treating him or anything like that. So we get to Maria and Tom. They're meeting Maria's family. Uh, her and her sister look just alike. So Maria said that they connected over humor. Okay. Um, I think that now that we know that Tom is judgmental because I'm not letting it go, I think a lot of his humor is rooted in truth. I've, I'm a person, I believe that there is truth in every joke. Every time somebody chooses to make a joke about you or at your expense, whether it's about your clothes, your hair, your whatever, there is truth in that. And that's why they're making a joke at your expense. You know what I mean? So I'm watching you, Tom. Think back to when the first night when they first met and they were in that bed together and she said something about, I can't believe we're together or something like that. And he was like, oh, you can't believe you're with somebody as good looking as me. He said something to that effect. And I remember being like, ugh, about it. But she laughed it off. You're going to get tired of them little jokes, Maria. I guarantee you, you are going to get tired of that passive, aggressive, judgmental joke. But let's continue. <laughs> so her sister said that this all happened so quickly and like, while we support you and we're happy for you, your heart and your mind might not have enough time to catch up to each other, which is often the case on Love is Blind, which is often the case on Married at First Sight, right? So her sister then asks Tom, uh, is there something that you think you need to work on with Maria? He was like, well, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. Nobody is, but that doesn't answer the question. He then goes on to say that, yeah, she said that I, you know, I make her feel safe and secure. That wasn't the question. What do you need to work on with her? Not what are you doing? I'm telling y'all something is off with time, y'all. I don't know what it is yet, but 
her sister gives him the stamp of approval, so they going to move forward. Um, he meets with her mom very briefly. It was a very sweet conversation, and her mom seems to really like him as well. We don't often get the parents being like, no, about anybody or the family doing that, so we know that all these meetups are going to go okay. So we then get to Sabrina and Steve. So they are meeting Steven's bezies, as he called them, his besties. Um, he didn't tell them that he was even doing this. So he showed up with this girl. They think he got a new girlfriend. Whole time is a fiance, right? So Steven said, look, we aren't in a rush to move any closer to each other. She's in North uh, Northern Ireland, and he is in London. So he's like, we can just go kind of back and forth. When their friends ask, could they see themselves saying yes at the altar, making it to the altar, Sabrina said, let's just see how this goes. And I didn't feel a way about that because I like the fact that Steve and Sabrina are moving at their own pace. They're not moving at a pace that is causing them to stress themselves out about it. They're enjoying each other. They're getting to know everything about each other while keeping it very low pressure. Now, we do got to light a little bit of a fire up on our asses because we do have a wedding date, but they seem to be doing the best so far in terms of being honest with each other, being very real about this. They've decided like, yeah, we're cool with going back and forth for now. She just recently quit her job. She's going to be working for herself. So because she's going to be doing that, she'll be able to transition more to London a little more easily. And then, you know, she'll go back to Northern Ireland to see her family and friends and such like that. But at the end of the day, they have both agreed that they want somebody that is going to add value to their lives and not become their whole lives. Like I said before, your partner should compliment you not complete you and I think that that's something that so many people come on to these shows they're looking for a person to complete them and when that person doesn't live up to that high ass standard that they put into place then there's the issue and that's why there are so many divorces and just non-marriages that happen on here so then the final scene of the episode was Nicole and Ben Ben, all right? So they're getting ready to meet Nicole's parents, and Benny is asking if he should shake her parents' hand. She was like, no, nah, go throw them up and throw up the folks. I said, no, ma'am, he will not. He will not shake, that, shake their hand. That's what you do. If they reach out for the hug, then you hug them back, Benaya. Don't let her get you uh, roped up. Don't, don't listen to Nicole. You don't dap nobody up. <laughs> what? <laughs> so her father comes in and I said her her daddy was something back in the day. You can tell. You can tell. What's his name? Walter. You can tell a what? You can tell he was something back in the day. He had a very intense eye glare contact stare, whatever you want to call it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> The way he looked at Benaya when he was asking him, where do you live? I said, mm, mm. So Benaya made up this story about where he lives. And then he talks about what he does for work. Her father thinks it's interesting. Uh, her mother stayed quiet majority of it, which I thought was kind of interesting. Her mom didn't add any real input until the end of the conversation. So she clearly didn't tell her parents that marriage was at the end of the rope, which I thought was interesting as well because her they looked shocked when she was like, yeah, at the end of this could be marriage. Now, look, Nicole, you have been married once before, so I understand your parents' apprehension to this, but they support you. They support you. They accept Benaya. They like Benaya. Nicole, once again, talks about how she would be devastated if it did not work out for her or work out with them. And I'm like, Ugh. okay. I mean, okay. And then we get the trailer for next episode, which y'all spoiled for me too. So I already knew that was going to happen. So thank you for that. But if you guys have not already, don't forget, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video, leave your comments about episode seven. Someone said that it is hard to remember what episode I'm talking about. It should not be. 
because it's in the title. And then I say it at the top of the episode. Episode 7. All right? Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.